Good morning, friends. I am Dr. Bharti Garg, Assistant Professor, Department of Public Administration, Punjab University, Chandigarh. Today, we are going to discuss a module on the structure, composition, functions of public service commissions in India. This is a very important module. This is a very important topic in the sense that these constitutional bodies they are involved in the process of recruitment of the civil servants in India. Now, after listening to this module on public service commissions in India, friends, you will be able to appreciate the role of public service commissions as bulwark of meritocracy in India. You will be able to learn about the constitutional status of the Union Public Service Commission and State Public Service Commissions in India. You will be able to understand the structure, composition, functions and role of public service commissions in India. Now, highlighting the importance of civil servants in India, civil servants play a very important role in the development of society and carrying out welfare of masses in India. They are the main pillars of development work in the country. So, considering the important role they play in the development of society, their recruitment, training, promotion, all the aspects relating to civil services, they carry a lot of importance. In a welfare state, the success or failure of the system depends on how efficient the civil services is. So, in that light, it becomes very important that civil servants are recruited in the right manner so that right person is placed at a right place. In this light, the role of public service commission assumes lot of importance. For the recruitment of civil servants, civil servants at the All India level, a constitutional body in the name of Union Public Service Commission has been set up. Now, public service commissions at the union and state level, they are constitutional bodies. Now, since they are constitutional bodies, it means that Constitution of India itself provides for the setting up of these bodies. Now, Part 14, Chapter 2, Articles 315 to 323 of the Indian Constitution provides for the setting up of these constitutional bodies at the union and state level. Now, these bodies are impartial bodies which are responsible for carrying out the recruitment process of the civil servants in India as well as in states. The Constitution of India visualizes UPSC as, as the watchdog of merit system in the country. Now, this function is carried out by UPSC through the examination system which is based on merit system. Now friends, let us have a look at a very short clipping about the historical background of the Union Public Service Commission, its structure and functions. Now before we see the present constitutional structure, composition and functions of the Union Public Service Commission, let us have a brief look at the brief history of the Union Public Service Commission. Now friends, we are going to have a look at the historical background of the setting up of the public service commissions in India. The public service commissions in India were set up firstly by the Britishers. In 1924, the Lee Commission had recommended for the setting up of an impartial and transparent body in the name of public service commissions. In 1926, the British government had set up a public service commission for the union government whose role was to recruit civil servants for the federal government. And later on, with the Government of India Act 1935, the, government, the British government in India set up a separate public service commission for the union government as well as for the state government. Now, after independence, following the same pattern, the Government of India had set up separate public service commission for the union as well as for the states. The only difference was that during British times, the Union Public Service Commission was called as Federal Public Service Commission and after independence, its name was changed to Union Public Service Commission. Now we are going to discuss about the structure, composition and functions of Union Public Service Commission. Now under Article 315 of the Indian Constitution, there shall be a Union Public Service Commission for the purpose of recruitment of civil servants of the Union government, that is All India Services and Central Civil Services. Now we are going to see the appointment of the chairperson and members of the Union Public Service Commission. 
Now, Article 316 of the Indian Constitution discusses about the appointment of the chairperson and members of the Public Service Commission. The Constitution is silent about the composition of the Union Public Service Commission. It simply states that the number of the members of the Commission shall be decided by the President of India as per the requirements. Now, based on that, the President of India appoints the chairperson and members of the Union Public Service Commission. Now, the conditions of service of the chairperson and members of the Union Public Service Commission, they are determined by the President of India. There is an important condition with regard to the appointment of the chairperson and members of the Public Service Commission. It is that nearly one half of the members of the Union Public Service Commission shall be those who have already served either under the Union Government or under the State Government for at least 10 years. Now in this slide we are seeing the composition of the Union Public Service Commission which has one chairperson and seven other members. Shri Deepak Gupta is the chairperson of the Union Public Service Commission who was to retire in November 2016 and along with the chairperson uh, the num names and the dates of joining and retirement of the other members of the commission is also mentioned in this table. Now we are going to discuss the term of office of the chairperson and members of the commission. The first point in this is that the term of the chairperson and members of the commission is either 6 years or 65 years of age, whichever is earlier. Now the words whichever is earlier, they are very important because a person who has completed the age of 60 years but his 6 years tenure is over, he cannot continue after that time period. So the important point to be considered is that out of either 6 years or 65 years of age, whichever is earlier must be considered while determining the tenure of the chairperson or members of the Union Public Service Commission. Now there are certain aspects with regard to the further employment of the chairperson and members of the Union Public Service Commission. The chairperson and members of the Union Public Service Commission, they are totally debarred from further employment either under the government of India or under the government of the state. But there are certain conditions with regard to their appointment. The chairperson of the Union Public Service Commission is totally debarred from any other assignment. But there, is, there are the conditions under which the members of the UPSC can be appointed further. A member of the UPSC can become either a chairperson of the UPSC or he can become a chairperson of the State Public Service Commission or a member of the State Public Service Commission. Now we are going to discuss about the removal or termination of the chairperson and members of the Union Public Service Commission. Article 317 of the Indian Constitution gives detailed elaboration regarding their resignation, removal or termination of office before the expiry of their term. Any member of the commission including the chairperson can relinquish his or her office by submitting a written resignation written to the President of India. Now as far as their removal and termination is concerned, Constitution of India has given detailed provisions that how their office can be terminated. As per Article 317 Clause 1, the President of India can remove the chairperson and members of the Commission on the charge of corruption or proved misbehavior. Now as far as proved misbehavior is concerned, an inquiry by the Supreme Court of India has to be conducted and after an inquiry on the report of that inquiry report, the President can remove the chairperson or members of the Commission. Article 317 Clause 2 also mentions that if the chairperson or member is found insolvent or involved in some other office of profit or is incapable to perform the work, even then the president can remove or terminate the services of the chairperson or members of the Union Public Service Commission. Now friends, till this point we have seen the structure and composition of the Union Public Service Commission and we have also discussed the tenure and the removal of the chairperson and members of the Union Public Service Commission. 
Now, UPSC plays a very important role in the recruitment process of civil servants in India. So, it is very important to discuss the functions of Union Public Service Commission. Article 320 of the Indian Constitution gives a detailed account of the functions of the Union Public Service Commission. The functions of the Union Public Service Commission are divided into two categories. One are the compulsory functions and second category is the advisory functions. The first function of Union Public Service Con Commission is to conduct examination for recruitment to the higher civil services in India. Now this recruitment is carried out through All India Competitive Examination and its objective is to select the meritorious candidates of highest capability to the highest positions in the country. Secondly, many a time state governments do not set up their own respective state public service commissions and many a times then they request the Union Public Service Commission to carry out the recruitment process for them. In that case, if the state governments so request, the Union Public Service Commission conducts the recruitment process for the state civil services. Now above these two functions are the mandatory functions of the Union Public Service Commission. The second aspect of the functions of the UPSC are the advisory functions of the Union Public Service Commission. Advisory functions means that the Union Public Service Commission advises the President of India on following matters. The first matter in which the Union Public Service Commission advises the President of India is with regard to the methods to be followed with regard to recruitment of higher civil servants in India. The second advisory function of Union Public Service Commission is with regard to the principles to be followed in making appointments to these higher civil services and with regard to the promotion and transfer of civil servants from one position to another and with regard to their suitability. The third matter on which the UPSC advises the President is with regard to the disciplinary matters which are affecting the civil servants while they are performing their duty. The fourth matter on which the UPSC advises the President of India is with regard to any claim of the civil servant with regard to the legal proceedings instituted against him while he is performing his duties be paid out of the Consolidated Fund of India. The other matters on which UPSC advises the President of India with, is with regard to any claim of pension which is done by a civil servant with regard to the injuries sustained by him while being on duty or any other matter which the President asks the UPSC to give its advice on. Now it is usually obligatory on the part of the Government of India to consult the Union Public Service Commission on the above mentioned matters highlighted under the advisory functions of the Union Public Service Commission. But the President of India by issuing certain regulations can exempt certain matters out of the purview of the advisory functions of the Union Public Service Commission. However, it is not obligatory for the government or the president to consult the UPSC with regard to the following matters. First is posts with regard to which the authority of appointment has specifically been vested in the President of India. It is not necessary to consult UPSA with regard to the appointment of diplomatic missions, heads of consulates, etc. Posts in the Secretariat of Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. It is not necessary to consult UPSA with regard to the posts in the appointment of Northeast Frontier Agency. Last but not the least, where the UPSC has clearly mentioned that it is not necessary to consult the UPSC with regard to those matters also, it is not mandatory on the part of government or the President of India to consult the Union Public Service Committee. UPSC has been assigned with regard to the conduct of examination for various services like All India Services, Geologist Examination, Combined Medical Examination, Combined Defence Services, Naval Services Examination, Indian Engineering Services Examination, etc. The chart depicted here in this slide gives a clear idea of various services with which the Union Public Service Commission is involved. Now, according to Article 323 of the Indian Constitution, UPSC has to submit an annual report to the Parliament of India through the President of India. It means that Union Public Service Commission submits its annual report to the President of the country who then submits it to the Parliament of the country. 
Now, along with the annual report, the government is also required to submit a memorandum which states that which recommendations of the UPSC it has accepted and which of the recommendations of the UPSC it has not accepted. It means that the government is held accountable to the parliament of the country for the action taken on the recommendations of the UPSC and stating the reasons why a particular recommendation of the Union Public Service Commission has not been accepted and why act no action has been taken by the government on the recommendations accepted by the government. Now we have seen the important role which the Union Public Service Commission plays in the recruitment of the higher civil servants in India and since we all know recruitment is a very important process and uh, it plays an important role in placing the right person at the right place. So it is very important that the constitution must ensure the independence of the Union Public Service Commission and in that light constitution has certain specific provisions to ensure the independence of the chairperson and members of the Union Public Service Commission. Now these specific provisions they have over the years made Union Public Service Commission an impartial and transparent body. In light with these specific provisions, the first provision is with regard to the fixed term and tenure of the chairperson and members of the commission. As discussed previously in the tenure of the chairperson and members of the commission, they can hold office either for 6 years or 65 years, whichever is earlier. Now, this shows that the tenure is fixed and government cannot influence the chairperson and members of the Union Public Service Commission. And moreover, they are further, the chairperson is further debarred from taking up any employment under the government of India or government of the state. And even the members of the commission, they cannot be appointed either under the government of India or government of the state. They can be the chairperson of the UPSC or chairperson or members of the state public service commission. So these bodies, they are independent bodies outside the executive control, they are constitutional bodies. So because they are independent constitutional bodies, they are free from executive control. Now the second provision which ensures the independence of the chairperson and members of the Union Public Service Commission is that the chairperson and members of the Union Public Service Commission can be removed from office on grounds specifically mentioned in the constitution. Now this means that the chairperson and members cannot be removed from office on frivolous grounds. So their tenure, their service is secured by the constitution itself. So executive cannot influence the chairperson and members or remove them or cannot threaten them that they will be removed from their office if they will not toe the line of the executive. So their security of service has been ensured by the constitution itself. The third provision which ensures the independence of the commission is that the conditions of service of the chairperson and members of the commission cannot be varied to their disadvantage. Now this is a major secure measure which is ensured by the constitution of India because the conditions of service when they are secure, so they, the members, the chairperson, they are sure that their service conditions are not affected if they will not toe the line of the political executive. Now very important aspect which ensures the independence of the Union Public Service Commission is their further employment. I have given detailed elaboration on the aspect with regard to their debarment from future employment. As I said the chairperson is totally debarred from any other employment either under the government of India or the government of the state and members they can be either chairperson of UPSC or chairperson or member of any state public service commission. So these are independent bodies in a way they cannot be appointed under the government or either of the government of India or government of state. So they can be appointed only with regard to public service commission so they cannot be lured by the political executive with regard to any future employments with regard to future employments either under the government of India or government of state. And lastly, a very important provision in the constitution of India to ensure the independence of the UPSC is that the expenses of the Union Public Service Commission, they are charged upon the Consolidated Fund of India. Now charged means they can be discussed but they cannot be voted upon. So it means that the expenses, they cannot be varied to the disadvantage of the commission. 
Now we have seen that uh, Union Public Service Commission is playing a very important role at the union level with regard to the recruitment and selection of the higher civil servants in India. Now UPSC is basically dealing with recruitment of all India service officers and central civil service officers. Now every state in India has its own state public service commission. The constitution of India under article 315 itself provides for establishment of state public service commissions. So in on the same pattern, every state has also opted to set up a state public service commission. In this slide, the logos of the various state public service commissions is shown. Now, since every state is different, so every state has adopted its own pattern with regard to the composition of state public service commission. So, the logos they are also wearing. So, just to give you an idea of variations in the state public service commission, so I have just I am showing you different logos on this slide. Now the next two slides are with regards to the names of the 29 state public service commissions. As you can see these slides are giving the names like Rajasthan Public Service Commission, Himachal State Public Service Commission, Haryana State Public Service Commission, Punjab State Public Service Commission, Tamil Nadu Public Service Commission, Uttaranchal Public Service Commission. So as I have just told you, every state has its own public service commission. So here are a list, here is a list of 29 state public service commissions. But as I have mentioned in my previous slides also, if any state opts that it doesn't want to set up a public service commission or it feels that its public service commission is not appropriate to carry out the recruitment process, it can also request the union public service commission to carry out the recruitment process for its state civil services. No, not to forget, I would like to mention that the state public service commissions, their work is to carry out the recruitment process for the state civil services. As we have all India services like IAS, IPS and Indian Forest Service, on the same lines every state has set up its own civil services which are known as state civil services. So state public service commission carries out recruitment for these civil services. Along with that of course it has the responsibility to carry out recruitment process for the police posts also but here we are just focusing on the structure, composition and functions of the state public service commissions now. Now the same set of articles, article 315 to article 323 part 14 of the Indian constitution, it deals with the structure, composition, powers, functions, removal, term of office of the chairperson and members of the state public service commission as is dealt with by these articles for the union public service commission. So accordingly every state has a state public service commission and now we are going to discuss the in detail with regard to the appointment term of member, the term of office of the members of the state public service commission. Now in this slide, if you can see, there is an organizational structure of the Himachal Pradesh Public Service Commission and JNK Public Service Commission. If you clearly look at these, uh, this slide, the organizational structures, they show that it has a chairperson and members which are varying in number from state to state. These two states have different number of members. And if you see, there is a complete hierarchy of offices which is mentioned here. There's a planning wing, there's a legal wing. So uh, if you see, then the commissions are also involved in all aspects of uh, work, administrative work, and they have to carry out the entire functioning of the government. So they function through various cells and dealing with the recruitment. And the main purpose of legal cell, for example, it is that if any legal matter comes up with regard to the recruitment process, if anyone challenges the recruitment process in a court of law, so the legal cell is activated. The main function of the planning cell is to plan the examination process to plan which activity will go on, the planning for the next year's examination process, etc. So it is a very, the recruitment process which is carried out by these public service commissions, these are the very, very well planned activities which are carried out. So it also functions like a bureaucratic structure and it has a complete hierarchy, it requires complete office, secretariat, planning wing, legal wing, etc. Now we are going to discuss the composition of the state public service commissions. In this, firstly, let us discuss the appointment of the chairperson and members of the state public service commission. Now the chairperson and members of the state public service commission, they are appointed not by the president of India, but by the governor of each state. Again, as in the case of union public service commission, there is no fixed membership of the state public service commission. 
membership varies from state to state it depends on the requirement of the state but the only difference is that in case of upsc members are appointed by the president of india and in case of state public service commission members are appointed by the governor of a state on similar lines as in case of union public service commission half of the members of the state public public service commission are those members who have served either under the union of union government or state government for at least 10 years now apart from this as far as tenure of the chairperson and members of the state public service commission is concerned they are to serve for 6 years or 62 years whichever is earlier now here lies a difference between the term of office of the chairperson and members between the upsc and spsc in case of union public service commission the tenure is either 6 years or 65 years of age whichever is earlier but in case of state public service commission it is 6 years or 62 years of age whichever is earlier now as far as removal of the chairperson and members of the state public service commission are concerned there is a difference the chairperson and members of the state public service commission they are appointed by the governor of a state but they can be removed only by the president of india all other grounds with regard to the removal and termination of the services of the chairperson and members of the state public service commission they remain the same as in case of union public service commission and they are clearly highlighted in various provisions of the constitution of india and they have been discussed in the previous slides when upsc was discussed the constitution further ensures the independence and in the functioning of the state public service commissions as we have discussed in the case of upsc also here also every effort has been made by our constitution makers to ensure the independence of the state public service commissions and various provisions are discussed as follows the very first provision which discusses the independence of the chairperson and members of the state public service commission is with regard to the appointment of the chairperson and members as we have discussed the members are appointed by the governor of the state but their removal is in the hands of president so the chairperson and members their functioning their work it is not influenced by the political executive of the state as their removal is in the hands of president so they are free somewhere they are free from state politics second provision is that they have a fixed tenure either of 6 years or 62 years of age whichever is earlier and they can be removed only on the grounds mentioned in the constitution they cannot be removed on any of the frivolous grounds which the political executive may impose on them so their service has been secured by the constitution itself and they are secure with regard to their work another important condition with regard to maintaining the independence of the state public service commission is that the service conditions once they join the office they cannot be changed to their disadvantage another aspect is they are debarred from taking up any employment either under the government of india or under the government of the state and the very important aspect is that the expenses of the state public service commission they are charged on the consolidated fund of the state now charged on the consolidated fund of the state it means that they can be discussed but they are non votable as in the case of the union public service commission now friends we have discussed in detail the constitutional provisions with regard to setting up of the union public service commission and state public service commissions as with regard to other bodies in india this uh, union public service commission and the state public service commission it is also a legacy of the colonial past they have been set up by the britishers in india and we have continued with the same after independence also and they have been assigned with a very important task of recruiting the higher civil servants in india and state public service commissions they are recruiting the state civil servants in the state but unfortunately more specifically with regard to the state public service commissions there are reports with regard to corrupt practices that have emerged in the state public service commissions now since these bodies are playing a very important role with regard to the recruitment since they have to select right person for the right place and on these agencies depend the entire personal system of the country so it is very important that these bodies be free from corrupt practices and they work in an impartial transparent and corrupt free they work in a transparent impartial and in a corrupt free manner 
so it is very important that they be that uh, impartial people people with highest integrity they are appointed in these bodies